In today's video, I'll show you the best clean architecture solution template that exists today. This is a project that puts an emphasis on testing, on complex authorization scenarios. We'll go over it, and by the end of this video, you'll not only be familiar with the template, you'll know how to use it, but you'll also know how to take it and make it your own and use it for your own projects. Now, before we jump in, I do want to announce my brand new course, Deep Dive into CleanArchitecture.net. Over here, we dive into some very, very interesting topics like eventual consistency, domain events, testing in clean architecture. We also go ahead and implement some complex authorization scenarios and many, many other topics that you really must know if you want to build production ready applications following clean architecture. And if you want to get a good deal on it, then you can go ahead to the bundles tab. And over here, it's on a 20% discount in the bundles. And the only way to receive another discount on the bundle is Nick was pretty generous to give me another 5% off if you use the promo code GitHub. So I'll put the link in the description. If you want to learn more, then make sure to check that out. Now let's jump into the template. Okay, so here's the project on GitHub. I'll put the link in the description as well. So you can go and smash the star button. So looking at the table of content, then you can see over here, we have the domain overview and the use cases. So going to the domain overview, we can see that this project is a simple reminder application. It allows users to create and manage their reminders. Okay, so basically if we have over here the user and over here we have the backend service, then as you would expect, the user can go ahead and create a reminder that will be stored in the backend service. And then the user can go ahead and fetch the reminders, list the reminders, etc. Now, each one of the reminders also has a due date. So when the reminder is due, then the user should be notified that the reminder is due. So there's also an option to send emails when reminders are due. So basically the reminder is due, then no problem. We send an email to the user telling them that these reminders are due. Now, just to make it a bit more interesting, then there's also the subscriptions. So there are two types of subscriptions. If you want to create a reminder, you need to have either a basic subscription or a pro subscription, where the difference is a basic subscription allows you to create three daily reminders. So you can create only three per day. But if you have the pro subscription, then you can go ahead and create as many daily reminders as you want. Okay, now to get started, then there are two options. You can either install the template and create a new project based on this template, or you can go ahead and clone the source code, which will give you the source code that we're looking at now. Then we can go ahead and run the project simply by saying .NET run and specifying the API project. So this sits under source and then API. So running this will build and run the application. And you can see that it's running over here on port 5001. Then over here, we have all the requests sitting inside a folder called requests. So we can go to the subscriptions. And if we want to create a new subscription, then we have this create subscription dot HTTP file. HTTP files are a standard way to define HTTP requests. And in most IDEs, you can use the definition of an HTTP file to go ahead and send a request. So as you can see over here, we have this send request button that I can click, which will send the request to the service. Now, if you're opening this in Visual Studio Code and you don't have this, then you want to head over to the extensions tab over here and search for REST client and download this one over here, which will give you the option to send requests from Visual Studio Code. Okay, so that is HTTP files. Now looking at the actual request, so we can see we're making a post request to the following endpoint. So we have users slash user ID and subscriptions where we're creating a new subscription for this specific user. Now, I want you to notice other than the request content, which contains the details about the user and the subscription type that we want to create, we also have the following authorization header where we need to specify some bearer token, which means that before we can go ahead and make this request, we need to go ahead and generate a token. So for this, we have the generate token endpoint which allows us to go ahead and generate a token based on the permissions and roles that we want. So over here, we can see that we can specify some user ID, first name, last name, and email. And then we can specify the various permissions that we want this token to have and the various roles. Now we know that our host is running on 5001. So we can go ahead and replace the host over here with localhost and then 5000 
and one, like so. And we can go ahead and make a request and this generates the token corresponding to the details that we provided. Now, the reason why this is how we're generating a token and there aren't endpoints to create users, register users, etc., is because most production applications today don't contain in the same project the identity provider. What most projects have is they have the backend service and then they have an external identity provider. So over here we have the external identity provider. And then when a user wants to go ahead and make a request, then they call the external identity provider, specify the details that they need to authenticate against the external identity provider. Then the identity provider will return a token and then the user can go ahead and call the backend service. Now, because we don't have this external identity provider, plus if we did have, then we would have some pre-configured permissions and roles. Over here, we have the option to play with the permissions and roles that we want to make sure that the authorization scenarios that we want work as we expect. Okay, so this is for testing purposes and what this endpoint comes to replace is this block over here of the external identity provider. Okay, so now that we have a token, then we can go ahead and copy this token and use it to create a subscription. So again, looking at what we have, we have users slash the user ID slash subscriptions. So over here, we see we get 201 created with the location header. And over here, as you would expect, we have the ID of the newly created subscription. Okay, so now that we have the subscription ID, then what we can do is we can go to the reminder and call the create reminder endpoint. Okay, now instead of replacing the values here manually, what we can actually do is create variables. So we can go ahead and say subscription ID and give it this value and then it will simply be replaced like a regular variable. So we have the subscription ID, we have the user ID, we have the host and the token. So I'll fill this out with the details like we did before. There we go. And now we can go ahead and create the request where over here we simply have the text that we want to re be reminded of and the daytime, this is when the reminder is due. So sending this, then again, we get 201 created where over here we have again, the location header and the ID of the newly created reminder plus the is dismissed property, which currently or by default is false. Okay, now diving into the actual implementation. So I created the following diagram, which is also available in the GitHub repositories readme, where basically we have the following. We have the two projects, the contracts and the API. The contracts is the definition of the requests that we're going to send to the backend service. And the API, this is the web application that will be running. So as you expect, we have over here the controllers that will receive the incoming requests. So looking at the project over here, then this is the API and the contracts. So like we said, inside the contracts, we have the actual requests. So looking, for example, at the create subscription, then over here, we have the one-to-one -one mapping between the API and C-sharp objects. Then we have the API, which like we said, is the host of the entire project. So over here, we have the program CS, which will go ahead and start the actual application that will listen on a specific port and wait for requests. And the requests will arrive at the controllers. And for each one of the endpoints, the structure that we have is we take the incoming data, we convert it into a command object or a query object. We send it via mediator. If you're not familiar with mediator, then don't worry. We send it via mediator, which goes ahead and actually invokes the use case and finally returns a response. So if everything's okay, then it returns no content. Otherwise, using the problem detail specification, it takes the list of errors and converts it to the actual error response to the client. Okay, so we saw how we have the first step where we take the data, we receive it in the controller, we go ahead and map it to a command or a query, we go ahead and send that now we'll see to the application layer. And then on the way back, then we receive the result and we return either okay or no content or something from the 200 family. Otherwise we return the corresponding error to tell the user what went wrong. Now internally, the mediator contains a mapping between each one of the commands or queries to the corresponding handler that will be invoked when the mediator receives this command or query. So we created the create subscription command, we send it to the mediator, the mediator is responsible to invoke the create subscription command handler 
in the application layer. So again, all the mediator is, is a component that receives one of these commands or queries, and it goes ahead and invokes the corresponding logic in the application layer. Okay, so taking a broader look at the application layer, then over here, we have all the use cases or features in our application. So for example, when we want to go ahead and create a new subscription, then over here, we'll probably create a new subscription object and store it to the database. So going back to the project, what we have is the following. So we looked at the API and the contracts. Now we're looking at the application project, which corresponds to the application layer. And over here, we have a separation per feature. So we see we have the subscriptions folder that inside here has the commands and the queries. We're looking specifically at the create subscription command. And over here, we have the create subscription command handler, which is the logic that will be invoked when the mediator receives the create subscription command. Okay, now the next thing I want you to notice is the following. So we have over here the various interfaces for interacting with the database, all the external dependencies, the infrastructure concerns that are abstracted away to the infrastructure layer are sitting over here. But we also have the following folder called security. Over here, we have all these various things like roles, policies, permissions, etc. And this corresponds to the following attribute. So to create a subscription, you need to have the following. You need to have both the create subscription permission and also you need to pass the following policy called self for admin. Each one of the commands or queries has the permissions and policies that are needed to take that action. So for example, when you want to go ahead and fetch a subscription, then over here as well, you have the permission, which in this case is get subscription. So you need to have both the get subscription permission and you also need to pass the self or admin policy. Okay, in the domain layer, then we have the actual domain object. So the reminder domain object, the user domain object, the subscription domain object, and all the various business rules are also encapsulated in the domain layer. So for example, looking at the user domain object, then we can see that we have the following logic. When we want to go ahead and set a reminder, then we're protecting the invariance, the business rules by saying, wait, 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 was the subscription canceled? If yes, then the subscription doesn't exist anymore. If the user reached their daily reminder limit, then you get some descriptive error that tells you that you can't create more reminders. And if everything is okay, then we go ahead and we increment the event count and we return success. Okay, finally, in the infrastructure layer, over here, I want us to focus on a few things. The first one is that we have the underlying repository implementation in the infrastructure layer. So looking at the user's repository, then we can see we have the user's repository that uses the DB context under the hood to go ahead and manipulate the database. And alongside that, we have all the various identity and authorization concerns over here as well. Then we also have various things of dependency injection and eventual consistency that are out of scope for this video, but you can take a look at the source code and of course, check out my courses if you want to learn more about that. Now, because we didn't cover everything, I want you to notice that over here on the GitHub repository, we have a pretty extensive documentation where we dive into authorization, testing, fun features like the eventual consistency or the background service for sending emails. So if you are interested about any of that, then make sure to check out the source code over here, read the documentation. And of course, if you have any suggestions or questions, then you can go ahead, feel free and open an issue over here. I'm reminding you again that my extensive course covers everything in this project and much, much more because we take a much more complex system and we build it out from scratch. So I encourage you to check it out if you want to build production ready, resilient projects following clean architecture. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. Make sure to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.